Okay. Hi, Demarcus. How are you? What's happening, Jerry? How are you doing, my good man? My good sir? My good friend? My good brother? I'm doing fine. Did you tell our other um, brothers happy birthday today? Not yet. Not yet. It's only 12 o'clock here. Got plenty So that of time. means that is three here. I got plenty of time left. So, so you don't tell them, you don't want to be the first one to tell them happy birthday? No. As long as I say it, and I give myself until 11.59 my time. <laughs> wow. As long that's as kinda... I say it before 11.59 Pacific time, we good. Mm. That's even not though, good. Even though neither one of them is in Pacific time. Yeah. That's not good. It's good Don't enough. you want them to know that, you know, you're thinking about them and that they're special to you and... We say their names every other episode on this podcast, so... Okay. <laughs> at least well, they know I'm thinking about them at least once a week. Well, that's a business thing. Um, you should want to. How's this a business thing? We ain't making no money. Okay. Well. <laughs> also, um, Demarcus, why don't you tell me how was your week this past week? It's been my week was pretty good. We started. Uh, we had uh, session zero for the Pathfinder campaign that I'm about to start at work with my tabletop group there. Mm -hmm. Um. We had performance reviews uh, at work, and this one went. It went better than the the, the than the previous one I had. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so you stopped listening to podcasts at your desk. I didn't say that. Oh. Um, and you know, why would you try to be so explicit when my coworkers also listen to our podcast? Oh shoot! So <laughs> you want me to lose my job? Is what, I is don't. That what I'm hearing here, that's that's what, you want both of us to be jobless so we can both commit ourselves 100 percent to the podcast. I that's what don't, I'm, but you said that was that's an what issue I'm hearing. in your last performance I don't, review. You I said mean, that was an issue in your last performance review. And it's no longer an issue. That is okay. That is not, Congratulations. He said, uh, my manager uh, told me he said uh he appreciated me um taking the feedback and uh I forget the words he used, but he said he appreciate me taking the feedback and like growing on it or working on it or whatever. So, hmm. Hmm. exactly. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Congratulations on because okay. I didn't say this before, but one of my coworkers was let go. <sighs> so what? And it, was, and it was a. I mean, it's it's a list. It's a long list. Um, and it's it was the other coworker who like, like they like when this when the new manager started. Like me and like one of the coworkers, we were both having like getting a lot of feedback from 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 old boy, um, and so you know, one of us let go, one of us was let go, the other one was appreciated for working on the feedback and taking the feedback. So mm -hmm. that's all I'm gonna say on that. Okay. And what was his position? Not right. Oh, he's the he is the director of user experience design. Oh wow. So he is like the head honcho over all of our jobs. <laughs> oh, wow. Damn. Yeah. And so, you know, that was like one of the things I was telling her. I was just like, you know, I was like, yeah, I understand you don't like what he's telling you and you don't agree with it. I was like, but at a certain point, you got to stop pushing back because we are adjective list designers. Mm-hmm. Not like senior designer, associate designer, you know, lead designer, you know, principal designer. None, none, no adjectives, just designers. Yeah. And yeah. he is the director of designers. Yeah. So uh, how do you think this is going to play out? Yeah. You know, if this was a movie, you know what I'm saying, you'll change the whole company. Yeah. You know, everything would be different, but this is real life. So did you cry when she was let go? Mm -mm. Mm. I didn't cry. I'm not a crier, but some of my other coworkers, they was like, "Oh, I was about to cry in that meeting when they told us," and I was like, "Oh, that's so sad, y'all. Don't cry." Wow. Okay, so um, go over today and check on her, see how she's doing. And and how is your girlfriend? She is doing well. She is 
right behind me Oh. in the kitchen. Well, never mind. Okay. I'm lying. No, she's not. I don't know where she done went. Okay. So no date or anything or. Uh, I have had some dates. Uh, she and I went to a meat festival on A meat festival? yesterday. A meat carnival. It was actually called meat carnival. M E A T. A meat carnival. M E meat to meat. Wow. <laughs> Wow. but it was just like um, imagine Fogo the child, but you got to walk around to the different stations, and they just and they feed you, and. It made me uncomfortable because it, I really felt like because the way people were acting, it wasn't like when like they would do like a little show and tell, like talk about whatever it was they was putting together, and then they would well, after they was done, they would just like pour it on a table and be like, "Come and get it," and folks would just rush it. And I'm like, I'm not a hog, and this feels like y'all just throwing food in a trough, and we just rushing y'all, and I was like, and I don't like it, and then everybody's not. I don't. I already don't really like to watch people eat, but this is a place where I'm just like, like everyone. If you're standing in line for like to taste something, everyone in front of you is just like shoving it in their mouth in the line, and it's, it's, it was, it was, it made me uncomfortable. I don't want to say it was disgusting, but it made me uncomfortable. And there was like this small woman who would like stand over the table and just like put shit in her mouth, and I'm just like, walk away. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm. Mm. Were were y'all Yeah. the only black people there? Of course not. Of course not. I feel like we were no. They were. I think they were maybe like, there were. There was a. There was there were about two handfuls of black people. We were like we were like one of maybe three black couples though. Wow. Everybody else was like mixed couples or interracial couples. Yeah. Um, and then I went on a date to like a little uh arcade bar, um, with a different person, earlier in the week. Mm Uh, hmm that was pretty fun. She was like real bubbly. You know, I enjoyed it. Did you play um Street Fighter versus Marvel? Marvel versus Street Fighter? Why would I play that? It's a uh arcade game. Oh, did they have it in there? Hmm, I don't think so. We played Soul Calibur though, and she was Okay. she was fucking good at Soul Calibur. I was like, she's like, Wow. I've never played this game before. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, so Caliber takes practice. That's a very intricate She kept picking game. folks with like long ass reach. It was just hard to get close to like Nightmare. And, uh, that old man. And I'm picking like fan favorites. I'm picking like Ivy and a lizard man. But you have played um so Caliber before, right? I've only, well, mostly on console. Like I played Soul Calibur, I think when it was on like Dreamcast or something like that. Or Okay. uh, what's that other one? GameCube. Yeah, that's when I played Soul Calibur. It had been some years. What else did we play? Um, played Time Crisis. That's one of my favorites. I was I was killing her in Time Crisis. Mm hmm okay Um, we tried to play Tron, but we was confused because Tron like in Tron, the Tron arcade game, you have to like pick the level you want to do, and each one is like a different game. Because like you know, you know the movie Tron is like they in the little arena and they play different games trying to like. free themselves from the grid or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so they had like a different uh, Coliseum game. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of reminiscent of that. But yeah, it was, I mean, I had a good week. I'm disappointed, Jared. But I guess I'll say that part. I guess I'll say that part. How was your week? What you been up to? My week You has said been you, said you had to do something strange to get your phone turned back on. What did you have to do? You had to give up a little bit of that booty. So I, I told you that in a private text message, I didn't broadcast that out I'll to be the telling world. you shit in private all the fucking time And and you I, break and it I up don't the podcast. tell it to nobody, so. This is my get back. This is my get back. All right. Anyways, one thing that I did was um, I Are you going to skip past my question? I'm definitely going to skip past it. <laughs> I'm definitely skipping past it. Hmm. Um, <laughs> One thing that I did was I, um, I had an interview um, Okay. for a job, and we You, were talking about this you, earlier, but this interview was actually for a podcast, um, and they needed somebody to do the marketing for it. 
Um, but mm. it was for a right wing political podcast. And this group that we're working for has helped people like Brian Kemp, all these Republican mm. senators and governors, mm. all these Trump supporters, very, 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 very white wing. So I mm-hmm. had this interview. The interview went fine. It was me and this guy. And I'm having this interview and it's going good. And um, uh, right after the interview, you know, and, and we laughed and everything. And right after the interview, um, <laughs> like an hour after the interview, my uh, the recruiter sent me an email saying, yeah, this job is going to work out. They have moved on from you. I'm like, of course they did. Then why am I still getting, this is the one that you sent me the little uh, referral thing for. Why she still calling me then if they already said they ain't fucking with you? Yeah, that's why, that's why you know, earlier today I was like, uh, when did she sit? send that like maybe it's for another job mm-hmm. but i don't think i have another job mm-hmm. oh i do have another job with them i think mm. for the black osteatrician's office to be their social media okay. manager so yeah yeah so should i take the call or not should i take the meeting go ahead but i did not get that um that right wing job and I really must be desperate because hey, the money is they politics might be red, but they money still green, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, I want to put our listeners on to a great, great show. And this segment is sponsored by Drumroll, please. Movie Pass. Demarcus, yes, can you sir. Tell them about Movie Pass. I can always tell them about Movie Pass. I love talking about Movie Pass. I tell people about Movie Pass like everywhere I go, all the time. Whenever I talk about a movie, I bring up Movie Pass. Movie Pass is a subscription based <laughs> service that allows users to watch multiple movies in theaters for a monthly fee. Uh, they got a bunch of different tiers. I was on the $10 tier for a minute, and you get three movies a month for that tier, which is basically a movie a week. Um, it was designed to make movie going like more affordable because you know at this point we playing like fifteen twenty dollars uh, a movie when I could just pay ten dollars for three movies every month, easy peasy, and you can do it too. You, your mama, your cousin, your sister, your brother, all y'all can do it. And if you get a high enough tier, you can take them. You can take an extra person. You can bring somebody with you every time. Uh, yeah, I mean that's Movie Pass, man. Now I don't know what more you need from that. Go ahead and try. <laughs> Yeah, so on this episode, I'm going to be recommending this show on Netflix called The Vince Staples Show. Um, have you seen it? Wow. I've seen, I think I've seen like the first episode, the first two episodes, but it's, yeah. I mean, it's it felt kind of like a black Seinfeld show to me. Wow. Everything comes back to Seinfeld with you, right? It doesn't, but that one definitely felt like a black Seinfeld show, like it wasn't a show about anything in particular. It's just a show about him living his life, I guess. Mm. Well, this show Would you is tell not... us? You've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. Um, this show yeah, is so not tell us about really about much. It's just about, you know, the life of Vince Staple. Of course, it's highly fictionalized. Um, and it's Famous just... Seinfeld. <laughs> and it's just... Um... You know, it's 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 just about his life. Um, this Famous show, Seinfeld. <laughs> this show is reminiscent of like Atlanta. Um, it's In because Seinfeld. you know, it, <laughs> wow, okay, like everything because that's how I feel with you. This show is reminiscent. No, of... this show is exactly like if 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 a black if, if Seinfeld started a black person from the hood, it would be the Ben Staple show. Okay, Demarcus. Um, yeah, this show is it. like Atlanta. It has very weird, very intricate, but very funny storylines. I think it's only like six episodes, so you know, it is season goes by really quick. 
Um, hmm. And ever since watching this show, because they said it's like Atlanta, you should watch it. But ever since watching this show and um and uh going back uh and and watching you know some of Vince Staples' interviews, he seems like a very nice guy. Like I don't know none of his songs, um. Hmm. So, but he seems like a nice guy. He seems cool. He seems down to earth. He always talks about his troubles with the music industry and things. So. Yeah, he seems like a nice, fun um, um, type of celebrity, a very down-to-earth type of celebrity. And I'm excited for the next season and to see more of him. I think that I'll actually uh, like listen to his music a little, you know. And I don't listen to his music because, you know, I don't like him, but I just don't like, you know, I don't like, like rap and stuff. So, mm. yeah. Mm. Do you listen to his music? I listen to Vince Staples. Uh, you know, one of his songs is called "North North." You know, I've heard oh, that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. North Side Long Beach. Um, yeah, I listen to Vince Staples. He, I can't say he's like one of my favorite artists, but you know, if if he dropped the album, I'll check out a few songs, the oh. singles or whatever. Um, cool. I got something to put y'all on to too. Uh oh, I watched an anime. A little while ago, it was called The Black Summoner. And it was a dope ass anime, y'all. It's uh 12 episodes, one season. I wish there was two, but um it's about it's a it's an isekai. Um okay. so I love like isekais. That. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you, thank you. Um it's an isekai, so the guy dies reincarnating into this like strange world, and he gets he is he gets like the most powerful like summoning magic. He becomes like the most powerful summoner. Um, but there are other people who are also reincarnated into this world and they are like heroes. But uh, the way he did his abilities, because he was able to choose his own skills and abilities while he was being reincarnated. And um, he and so he chose like a bunch of summoning abilities and a bunch of like growth abilities. So he like grows twice as fast as like anyone else that was like summon there and but summoners are super rare in this world um and i think there are only like four and he's the fifth one and he's like still more way more powerful than all the other summoners so he can like make contracts with monsters and then summon them to fight for him as the monsters go stronger with him they like evolve into different kinds of monsters and stuff like that it's pretty dope it's um and it you know, and I found this because i was like i was disappointed in this season's anime so i was like looking for something else to watch and it was really good um Trying to think of anything else I can give away. Mm. Mm -mm. So, like, what's the gore like on this show? Mm. What is the gore like? Um, I wouldn't say it was very gory. That that didn't stand out to me. Okay. Um, but it's definitely it's more of like a harem anime because oh, he no. like a lot of the folks he recruits are like women. He recruits like one guy. Um, like one monster and then like other than that it's like demons and shit and they eat and like most of them are women um uh -uh. you know and like, like all of them are in love with him and then uh -uh. eventually eventually he summons like he summons a hero of his own uh so like he re he not maybe not reincarnate he reincarnates a person from his from his world into this new world um yeah it's uh -uh. It's, it's a good anime though it's a good anime but uh, it's a harem anime uh, it, it starts to get harem -y, like halfway through. Once he starts recruiting like the third and fourth person, you'd be like, mm, this is looking like a trope. But um, I'll, I'll be hyped to watch season two. Uh, if he, if it, I, I need him to recruit some more men into this uh party of his. Because right now it's like, it's looking like you just trying to, you know, play with girls. Yeah. Is our, right. is our Twitch rating like MA uh, or R or something like that? Our Twitch I rating? Wanna, I don't want us to get like uh, deprioritized on Twitch because I'm cussing and whatnot. I mean, it should be explicit. Okay, bet. That's all I need to know. That's yeah. all I need to know. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, that was that. So mm -hmm. uh, y'all people need to stick around and we will be Right, right back. Right.
after All these right. brief messages. After a brief message. BGE and Jared, you know, I'm trying to get back into my comics. Uh, I picked up a few things here and there, but I'm looking for something that I can like jump onto brand new, like start from issue one and start reading. Like, what do you, what you got? What do you got on your plate? See, Demarcus, nothing's good, Al. Nothing from Marvel, nothing from DC, <laughs> nothing from Image. All this stuff, trash. Um, give it the static shot uh, and make him ride it into the stun set. It is trash, everything. But what I am doing is I am gearing up for the few and far between. This comic book is going to be like Final Fantasy and Avatar and everything else. It's an original story with a lot of different nations in it. You have got to look into this book. Mm, okay, okay. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. Uh, where can I find it? Where, where am I looking? I could tell you. But we're going to have the actual creator of the comic, Damien Beckman, tell me. Damien, take it away. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, if you're interested, just like Jared said and Demarcus, if you're interested for a story inspired by Final Fantasy, inspired by Avatar The Last Airbender, starring a Black character, starring a true Black girl magic, go to the far, farbetweencomic.com. Um, it'll take you directly to our Kickstarter page. You can pre-order it there. Um, there's a lot of great things that we have in store. Again, if you're interested in a fantasy story starring a Black character, inspired by Final Fantasy, inspired by Avatar, go to farbetweencomic.com and hit that notify me on launch button or pledge today. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I can, I can pledge money today. I can, I can do start donating right now. Well, the campaign the campaign starts August the 13th through the September the 12th. You can oh, pledge, okay. but that's when the campaign is. All right, I'll wait. I guess I'll be patient. It's a few <laughs> and far between. <laughs> so go to Far Between Comic right now, sign up, and get ready for the best store of your life. Um, and we are back. And for all of our new listeners joining us here on Black Geek Energy, my name is D Marcus, and the D today is for disappointed. Uh, we kind of tried. To pull, we kind of had to pull a hail mary this week with the episode. We were supposed to talk about our first D and D game that we played. Uh, shit, at this point, like a month ago, right? It's like three weeks. Same difference. Um, same level of disappointment. I'm so. I was so excited to talk about it because it was, it was so much fun. We played with Fair and Aaron, two of our friends. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm just disappointed. I'm still hyped for this episode, but I'm disappointed that we didn't get to do that one. But we're going to do it next week, so tune in next week. And my name is Jared, and why are you disappointed? Somebody had a funeral to go to. I mean, I can. I, I'm a complex. I'm a. I'm a human being with complex emotions. I can feel more than one thing at one time. I am yeah. sorry they had a funeral to go to, but I'm also disappointed that we didn't get to stick to the plan for our show. All right. Um, we will talk about all that next week. Um, it's still going to be a great episode, so let's get to it. Demarcus, mm -hmm. do you have a game for I this? I always. Week? Have a game, Jerry. You know this. You okay. know this. What did Chat GPT pick up for us today? Well, Chat GPT did not build our game. Um, and today's game is Cream of the Crop. Oh my God. <laughs> and the way this game works, uh, I find or curate a list of uh 10 items. Uh, these could be anime characters, uh, popular moves, you know, special moves, or anything else. Uh, Jerry has to guess the top five things with six answers. Uh, each guess is worth a, each correct answer, rather, is worth a certain number of points. Jerry needs 10 points to win. Jared, are you ready to begin? Sure. Okay, great. So you are going to be guessing the top 10 Disney movies, Jared. 
of all time. Of all time. Top 10 Disney movies. Okay. That's pretty much it. I ain't even gonna offer no hints or nothing this time. <laughs> Let me know when you ready to start guessing. All right. Um Disney. Disney. Not that me. Disney. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say frozen. And, and how many guesses do I get? You get six guesses All right. to get the top five things. All right. I'm going to say Frozen. Frozen. Mm-hmm. Um, the Lion King. Okay, okay, okay. That's a good guess. I would have guessed The Lion King. That would be my first guess. Wow, okay. Because didn't The Lion King, like, save Disney? Wasn't Disney, like, going under? And then they released The King movie was so kind of like I don't know kind of breaking up but um I think that Beauty and the Beast and the Little Mermaid came right before um the Lion King and that started the whole Disney movie revolution so yeah I I don't think that the Lion King saved Disney at all Mm, okay okay um, but uh, I said uh, Frozen and the Lion King. I have six guesses. Why you look so confused? I'm not confused. Oh, um, hmm. uh, the lot, not the Lion King, but the Little Mermaid. Okay. Uh. Aladdin. That's, one of, that's my favorite Disney movie right there. Aladdin. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. That's funny because the theme is be yourself. And I've always seen you be yourself. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, How many more do I have? How many more guesses? Got two more guesses. Two oh, more guesses. Yeah. All right. Get them on the uh, wall. Dude. I want to say Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Uh oh. Oh shit. Sorry. I'm only mm-hmm. thinking of live action. Um, I'm mean, only thinking of anime. I'm not thinking of any live action movies. Uh mm. And I can't think of any live action movies, right? Oh, I mean, okay. Uh, I'll just put Avengers Endgame in there. That's a Marvel movie. This is strictly Disney movies. Okay. So Marvel being owned by Disney doesn't. No. All right. Um. No, you okay. don't see the little castle and shit at the beginning of the movie, like yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I'll say, um, I don't know. I, I I cannot think of any live action movies right now by Disney. Uh, I mean, right, they're, they're the ones we've already named. <laughs> They've oh, only yeah. remade their best movies into live action movies. So, all right. So I'll just do? I'll just say, um. 101 Dalmatians. Mm, that's a good guess. The Dalmatians. Yeah. I had a little key forgot about them. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Bet. Want me to go through your list again? See if you want to change yes, anything? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, Lord. Hold on. I keep knocking over my mic. Uh, all right. So you got Frozen, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, and 101 Dalmatians. Yeah. You you want to stick with those? All of those is uh locked in. That's what you, locked in. All right, bet we locked in. And I'm gonna go through the list starting with number 10. Okay. Number 10 is Tarzan. What? First Yo, of Tarzan, all, Tarzan, who was in Tarzan? The Tarzan oh, soundtrack Tarzan was dope. Collins. Tarzan was a great movie. 
a man raised uh, by gorillas must decide where he belongs, where he really belongs, and when he dis and when he discovers that he is a human and not a gorilla. Well, that was stupid of him. He should have knew. <laughs> I mean, he knew he was different. He just thought he was a bald gorilla. Well, that was dumb. That was real dumb. If you was raised by gorillas, you would just think you was a bald gorilla too. No, like I when would. dogs look at us, when dogs look at us, they don't be like, "Oh, this is a human." They be like, "No, this is just a, a a strange dog that walks on two legs." Well, no, I think that dogs know that they're dogs because when they see other dogs, they be like, "Oh, wow, it's my brother." Nah, because if if dogs weren't trained, they sniff your butt just like they sniff another dog's butt. Dogs don't be sniffing human butts though. They dogs do be, man, be all dogs, up be, in... dogs be all up in your crotch. Anyway, anyway, we getting off track. We getting off track. Uh no number eight. Crotch. Number eight. What dogs oh, number be in 10 your crotch? was the jungle book. I started, I, I messed up. Number 10 is the jungle book. Bahira the Panther and Baloo the Bear have a difficult time trying to convince a boy to leave the jungle for human civilization. There's a theme here. Disney always got somebody being raised by animals and having to and needed to return to human life. Well, the Jungle Book was very sad about English colonial colonialization. So mm. okay. Well, number 10 is the Jungle Book. Number nine is Tarzan. Number mm. eight is Peter Pan. Wendy and her brothers are whisked away to a magical world of Neverland with the hero of their stories, Peter Pan. So so far, I haven't got any of these. Uh yeah, but I should have. You, I you're only looking Peter for the Pan. top five. Are we starting with the top ten, Jerry. All your guesses could be in the top five. We only on number seven. Well, okay. Well, I number uh, seven. I I, I should have guessed Peter Pan because that one's been remade countless times by Disney. Uh, mm -hmm. That one's in Kingdom Hearts. Like that one's mm -hmm. everywhere. So, yeah, I should have. Tarzan that. is also in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Tarzan's in there too. Mm -hmm. I was even the, thinking Kingdom Hearts when I thought of this. If that's the measuring stick we're using. Yeah. Uh, number seven is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, I said Snow White. Right? Did you? No, you Did didn't, I? Jared. Because I read this list again, and you told me you was locked in on what you got. Well, I was thinking Snow White. You didn't say it. Well, I said something else. 101 Dalmatians instead. <laughs> okay. Uh, Number six. Oh, you're not going to read the Snow White synopsis for those who have oh, 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 um, oh, oh, my bad. I thought I did. You know what I'm saying? My bad, my bad. Uh, Snow, White. Snow White and the Swerving Dwarfs, exiled into the dangerous forest by her wicked stepmother, a princess is rescued by seven dwarf miners who make her part of their household. Mm. That's crazy. You know... I wonder how long uh, Snow White lived there and like what kind of relationship she had with all seven of these men. Yeah, me too. Because mm -hmm. ain't no way she was there for like five years and never gave nobody a shot, right? What do you mean gave nobody a shot? Never mind. Anyway, number six <laughs> is Aladdin. <laughs> okay, I said Aladdin. Number six is, you did say Aladdin. And number six gets you two points, Jared. For guessing number six, number six is Aladdin. The kind-hearted street urchin and a power-hungry grand vizier vie for a magic lamp that has the power to make their deepest wishes come true. Yeah, I definitely I like said Aladdin because Aladdin has a sequel. It had a TV show. They were in Kingdom Hearts. It has. It, there's like three Aladdin movies. Yeah, there's there's three there's Aladdin, Aladdin cartoons. Aladdin and Return of Jafar, Aladdin and the King of Thieves. And you, Aladdin and the, the King of Thieves, action. you found out. And it's a live action Aladdin, which is, wasn't as good as the animated joints, but Will Smith was in it, so I fuck with it. Yeah. Um, and then the, the Aladdin cartoon series, I used to watch that joint. That joint was pretty good. Yeah, too. it was good. Um in the in Aladdin in Aladdin 3, you find out Aladdin Daddy's the king of thieves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just left his son on the on the dirt. Hey man, were you were you on the hunt for that money? He thought he left it with with, with 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 his uh with his woman. You know, he's always been raised by his mama, but his, you know, his mama died, I guess. Yeah. Number five is The Little Mermaid, Jared. Two more points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another show with 
a movie, a sequel to the movie, a live action, a cartoon TV show, though. show in the Mm -hmm. 90s, and a cartoon show now in 2024. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I think I knew it had a cartoon show now. It's like a little kid TV show, right? Yeah, with the black Yeah. Ariel. Mm-hmm. I like the I like the Little Mermaid back in the day, and I like the uh the uh TV show. I think there's a Little Mermaid too. There's a movie. There's a there's a there's Yeah, a sequel. there's a there's a second cartoon movie. Yeah. Number four. You ain't gonna never guess this one. Number four is up. 78 Up year is old. Pixar. They're not according to this list. Up is Pixar. Let's let me let me double book shit. Up is Pixar. <laughs> nah, up is from Disney. Up is a Disney movie, bro. Let Up me is see. a Up Walt picks Disney up. Pictures, Walt Disney Studios, Motion Pictures. Up. A venture Oh. film produced by Pixar Animated Studios and released by Walt Disney It Pictures. might have it might have been a it might have been a, a, a team up then. Might have been a team up. All their things are team ups. They Disney releases all their movies, but that's a Pixar production. I wasn't even thinking Pixar in this. I I I, I demand a recount. <laughs> hey, up is on this, bro. If you got a problem with it, take it up with IMDb because they came up with this list. Oh my god. Um, number three is Frozen. Two more Okay. points, Jared. For Frozen. Okay. Uh, but I didn't read the synopsis for Up. Up, 78 year old Carl Fredericks Fredrickson travels to Paradise Falls in his house equipped with balloons. Inadvertently taking a young man stowaway. Uh, all right. Mm. Yeah. Number three is Frozen. Fearless Okay. optimist Anna teams up with rugged mountain man Kristoff and his loyal ranger Finn in an epic journey to find Anna's sister Elsa, whose icy powers have trapped the kingdom of Arendelle in eternal winter. Yeah. Yeah. Frozen Mm-hmm. was in, um, had a, the movie is getting a sequel, had a sing along, had a uh, frozen on ice, and was in Once Upon Mm a hmm Time on ABC. That's crazy. Because I used to watch Once Upon a Time, but I never got that far. Wow. Um, I didn't make it past the I mean, I got, uh, I got, last I got, season. probably, I got a few seasons in, but I didn't stay up with it till they start when to the point where they started adding like the new um, stuff, the new movies. Uh, all right, number two, Jared, are you ready for number two? Yeah. Number two is Toy Story. A cowboy Yes. That's dog's Pixar. profoundly threat <laughs> and jealous when a new Spaceman action figure supplants him as top toy in a boy's bedroom. I definitely would have said Toy Story if I knew we were doing Pixar as well. That was has four movies. A fifth one is on the way. Um Was in Kingdom Hearts, had a whole bunch of shorts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is If this I a would have known it was Pixar too, I it's I would it's have. showing it's showing that it's on Disney Plus distributed It's on Disney by Walt Plus. Disney distributed by Walt Disney Motion Pictures Yeah, all of Pixar's movies are distributed by Walt Disney, but I didn't know that we could say Pixar movies. Let me see here I don't not, I'm this this page I'm looking at is not telling me that Pixar I mean, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm not doubting you. I'm pretty sure I've seen like little Pixar lamp stamping out the eye thing on a, uh... yeah, Disney Pixar. Okay, yeah, here you go, right here. Disney Pixar. Yep, Toy Story is a Disney and Pixar collab. All of Pixar's movies. <laughs> oh, Demarcus. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, man, blame the list. Don't blame me. I am blaming you because you should have said and Pixar. Because when I said, because when I said Avengers Endgame, you should have said, oh, it's, it's not, it's just pure Disney. It's pure Disney. And it's not So number pure Disney. one, number one is Beauty Wow. and the Beat. And I said Beauty A prince and the Beast. cursed to spend his days as a hideous monster sets out to regain his humanity by earning a young woman's love. I don't like that synopsis because that's not really how that movie went.
That is how that movie went. No, because he didn't set out to do nothing. It's more like um, an outcast woman who loves books discovers a prince cursed to spend his days as a monster and sets out to show him that he can still be loved. Because she is the actor. She is the protagonist. She is the initiator, the driver of that story, not him. Okay. That story is about Belle. It's not about the Beast. Well, you know, men always want to see log lines against um about other men. It's a patriarchal society. That's not if, true. I like uh I like stuff about women. If they had a log line that featured the woman, then that movie wouldn't have been made. Jerry, I think you uh, you may have won this game. Yeah, um, I won even though you cheated. I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. But you, did you, know, cheat. What, you know what? You know what? You know what really burns my biscuits about this list? What? The Lion King is number fifteen. How? That's crazy. The Lion King is such a great movie, and for it to be number fifteen on this list is disrespectful. Okay, so was this was this best movies or highest grossing movies? Top 25 Disney movies of all time from INDB. Yeah. By no. You should have did awesome. highest grossing. Look at highest grossing Disney movies. Highest right grossing? Quick. Yeah. No. We're doing. Because the Lion King is on that if top. If I wanted to list. do highest grossing, I would have did highest grossing. I wanted to do the top. Because these, fan because that those lists on INDB are all fan made. Like, 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 you got a list from from Susan, um, in in Connecticut. His name is Drew. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Demarcus, somebody oh. who isn't even an industry professional. You got some. We don't know what Drew does for a living. Not right. Blogs. He you put the, the like... little pictures on the little thing and press submit. You would not have liked the list of highest grossing either because number one is Avatar. The blue guys, Avatar. Yeah. Number three is Avatar The Way of Water. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would make sense. James Cameron makes huge movies. And, and where's, Did where's you know Endgame? Titanic was a Disney movie? Huh? Did you know Titanic was a Disney movie? Yeah. Because, because I didn't, and it's number four. The Force Awakens is number five. Infinity War, No Way Home. The Lion King is number eight. I, I, I can fuck with that, I guess. But it's, it's between 19. Action. It's a live fucking action. Ugh. I don't like hold it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh. That's don't what I said. That. Don't do that. Avengers, the Avengers movies are have three of the top spots in the top ten highest grossing Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Which is insane. That's why I didn't. That's why I didn't do highest gross one. That's why I didn't want to. That's why I, I. I didn't know it was gonna be like this, but I knew I did not want to judge it by this. By this uh thing. Look up high highest grossing animated movies. Disney animated movies. All right, twenty five highest grossing Disney animated movies of all time from Collider. I don't think you're gonna fuck with this list either, Jared. Well, I'm not. I definitely ain't gonna fuck with this list, but I don't think you are either. Where is the first Lion off, King? First off, Collider Collider is hella loading hella slow, and it uh, froze my went my internet window. All right. While we wait on Collider, I'll, I, I'll add up your score. Um, so you got three points for Beauty and the Beast. Two points for Aladdin, two points for The Little Mermaid, and two points for Frozen. The other two were not on the list. And you only needed one more point to win, because that's nine points, Jared. You only lost this joint by the skin of your teeth, man. Well, if I knew that we could say things that are not purely man, if Disney. If Simpson Bust was candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. I don't want to hear that shit. Wow. Wow. You don't want to hear it because you know you're wrong and you know you cheated me. So. No, because it ain't going to change the outcome. We here now. All right. All right.
All right, so today, well, has has the list loaded yet? Hell no. Okay. <laughs> well, today's episode, we are going to talk about our favorite Disney Okay, I got villain. a list. Sorry, I got a list. Um, all right, and I'll go through the real quick top ten animated Disney, uh, Walt Disney Animated Studios top ten lifetime gross, Frozen Two, Frozen, Fia, Moana, Big Hero Six, Ralph Breaks the Internet, Tangled, Wreck It Ralph, Bolt, and The Princess and the Frog. This is they're only doing the top fifteen, and The Lion King is not on this list. Mm. You know what I mean, Jared? We old. We old, and our old sensibilities have no place in this modern world. All right. So today's episode, we are actually going to have a discussion about the people who are the protagonists in Disney films who are also, you know... Pretty, pretty gay. They're not the protagonists. They're the antagonists. Oh, yeah, they are the antagonists. You're right. <laughs> They're the I thought antagonists. you were trying to be clever at first, and I was like, wait a minute. Well, well, I mean, they're the protagonists <laughs> in my heart. Yo, I watched this one reel where this old lady was saying, like, <laughs> she, was so, she was talking about how uh, Ursula... Is the real victim of the Little Mermaid because Ariel signed a fucking contract. I mean, but did she lie? <laughs> and, you know, she's not, yo, she's not, and she, and, you know, and like one of her daughters was like, "Well, Ariel was only like sixteen years old. She didn't. She wasn't old enough to sign a contract." And she was like, "Well, where was her parents?" <laughs> oh man! Imagine your sixteen-year-old home. And like, yo, I signed this contract and then we owe this person twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um. I mean, if you if you sign that dotted line, then I mean, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? I mean, in a court of law it wouldn't hold up because there was no parent or guardian there. There's no uh parent under under signature, so that contract would be null and void. So, you know, once again, uh Okay, Ursula but they is the they bad. did they weren't in America She's an underhanded businessman. with America's laws, so You're there right. is It's no. not America. There's not it's not America. So that means we don't even know what 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 contract law looks like in whatever, whatever kingdom they was in. Atlantis. It wasn't in Oh, you're right. Okay, Atlantis. Yeah. All right. All right, so let's talk about some of the gayest Disney villains. For the first of these, I'm really going to throw out um, one of my favorites, gay villains, because she is magnificent. Um, she is, you know, the way that she flirts, like, struts around her castle, the way she um, swishes her cape. I have to say Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. No, I thought about to say Cruella. <laughs> I thought You're about to say who? you were about to say Cruella Deville. I mean, Crowd the Deville is going to be here, but um, Maleficent is a drag queen, honey. She's a definite drag queen, the way that she can um, change her... The way that she reveals her um, outfit um, midway through and then reveals it again into the fierce dragon. The way that she, Mm. you know I mean, did you see her moving throughout her castle? Like, Mm hmm who moves like that except for a drag queen, darling? The runway was calling and she mm was hmm answering. Okay. <laughs> what? You, you don't believe me? I do believe you, and I agree, and I agree with Maleficent. I don't know if she's a drag drag queen, especially since I seen Angelina Jolie play Maleficent. Oh God. Mm -mm. Maleficent is for the straights. She's for us. No. Well, she may be for Every y'all, but she every was. dad in America went to go went to see their daughter to see Maleficent, the Maleficent live action. Well, she may be for y'all, but she was created by us. So Mm. you need to know where all this inspiration comes from. Um While we're on that, you mentioned the Little Mermaid earlier. The Little Mermaid Mm -hmm. is very gay. She's actually a drag queen. She was based on um, 
Are you talking about Ursula? Yeah, Ursula. She was actually oh, based right. on a drag queen. Um, I forgot. She was. Her. Yeah, I forgot her name. Uh, uh, I don't, I, don't, I forget her name too, but I do know. I do know what you're talking about. I feel like that's common knowledge by now, right? Everybody knows that. No, I, I feel like hope. people don't know. Jesus, I feel like people don't know. Divine, mm -hmm. you yes, divine yeah. inspired Ursula, and mm -hmm. you know she she she's amazing. She's amazing the way you, she talks. Yeah, she. I do like. I did like uh, Ursula as a villain. Um, do you think that? Do you do you feel a way that Disney villains, most Disney villains, have this air of a uh, homosexuality, queerness? Uh, do you feel like do you feel like Disney was trying to like demonize gay for a long, long time? Most definitely, because you know, comics mm -hmm. were doing the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it it definitely was a this person is different, hence they are gonna be mm. evil. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely, mm. most definitely. I hear you. Okay. Like like, look at Scar. When you think yeah. about it, there's no reason why Scar, I mean, before the ending of that movie, the third act, um, mm -hmm. there's no reason why he should be the villain, especially when you look into his actual name and his motivations and why he is doing this stuff. You, I mean, that's deep lore for um somebody. Yeah. But they're but making, you, um, my bad, go ahead. Let me yeah, you, you have to think like, was Scar the villain? And hopefully this movie that comes out in, you know, um Christmas will answer those questions. But yeah, they they make another you know, that prequel for Mufasa and Scar. It's like Mufasa's Young Life. In a in a, in the gist that I've read is that um Mufasa's adopted. Yeah. He ain't even a natural born member of that pride. Yeah. I mean and we saw that and, in the um the, the trailer for the movie. Yeah, and um, and normally in the real in 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 the real life in realities, wild, the lions with like darker manes and darker fur are supposedly have more testosterone, and so would naturally be, you know, the head of the pride or like higher up in the food chain. And so, yeah, I would be, I would feel, I would feel a way as well if we, if my family, like adopted, like. A light skin, even lighter than me, and then he just got everything that I was supposed to get. I would, I might kill him too. Yeah, and if my this name was supposed was trash. to be mine, this was oh, supposed God. to be mine, and yeah. they and they and they named him trash. Yeah, they named his name Taka means trash, and Mufasa means king. This man is adopted. He doesn't belong here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh. Talking about Scar in that movie, Scar was extremely homosexual. Um, there, there's no mm. um, uh, looking at it two ways. There's no maybe he mm -hmm. is, maybe he isn't. Maybe he didn't um, get to be the king of Pride Lands because he is gay, which is mm -hmm. <laughs> an, another issue. But yeah. But he did become the king of the Shadowlands. Yeah, he became the king of the Shadowlands. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Scar throughout that. that. Place? Huh? <laughs> I said, what about that shadowy place? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what um Simba said. That's but yeah, throughout the whole Simba. movie, yeah, uh, Scar was giving very flamboyant, very diva like vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> giving very he was giving very much Jared. <laughs> wow, you think so? Yeah. I think so. On your good days. Like when you be feeling yourself, like when you be wearing that little uh that little sparkly uh romper with the cape. That one you did, I think the one that you did feel like you maybe your last birthday. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to post a picture. We're gonna have to, the cheetah? We're gonna have to uh, bring that back. No, not the cheetah, the black one that was like shine that had like the shiny on it. But back when you was like running all the time and you was like working out a little bit. I don't know what you're talking about. The shiny. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. that um, 
I always thought that I was more of a Jafar. That was going to be my addition to this list. Jafar is one of the gayest villains I've ever seen. And like, <laughs> and he was at the Jasmine so hard. I was like, yo, I was like, he just got a beard. Like, yeah. that only reason he met with Princess Jasmine. Um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, he was he was like fashionable. He was eccentric. You know what I'm saying? All of he his got a outfits, giant snake staff. All of his outfits yeah. were amazing. That giant staff that he always carried around. That phallic symbol <laughs> was that big ass hat. Yeah, it, hypnotizing it was... the damn, uh, hypnotizing the the, the Sultan. Mm -hmm. He really mm -hmm. was trying. He really wanted to tell that Sultan. He's like, look, I'm everything you need. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I can be. Uh, what 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 is the queen called when you got a sultan? Uh, sultaness? Vizier? No, he was the grand vizier. Yeah. That was his position, which is like the the you know the head advisor to the king. Yeah, the hand. Um, mm -hmm. it was the way he said that to vizier. <laughs> <laughs> I loved I loved Jafar. I, I, I loved how he used to say Aladdin's name. He was like Prince Abu. -Bu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 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 taking the slightest thing that would be like of no concern to nobody else but mm -hmm. the person you're talking to. That's a very gay thing. <laughs> That's a very gay thing. Like, like, just um, oh, I didn't know. I thought it was hmm. Prince Abu Boo. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's a Tell very, again, very gay thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one I want to talk about, and slightly controversial, but um, Gaston. Mm. Gaston seemed like he's repressed. Yeah, very repressed. Yeah, Barry DL, but um, his little mm -hmm. friend knew what was going on with that. Who was his friend? Oh no, that uh, was his. I think that was his. Uh, that was like his low key boyfriend. He was like, "Look, you can be my man, but we gotta stay in the closet. You my friend mm -hmm. in public." Well, according to Disney, his name was uh, uh, Lefou, L E F O U. Mm -hmm. According to Disney, Lefou is gay. Mm. So yeah, Disney saying the mm. character is gay is huge, but now we got to think about this Le Lefou Gaston relationship. Like yeah. that was damn Jerry. Hey Lefou, like them trades like you, the Marcus. <laughs> Jerry, do you, all, like, do you not like trades? You don't even know what trades. Do you not like is Gaston a trade? Define trades for our audience. Is is guest on the trade? No, yes define no, trades for our audience. No, yes or no, Jerry? Answer no, the no, no, no. I, I I don't know what trade is. Can you yes, define you it for me? Yes, you do. Because you find them whenever we go out. <laughs> <laughs> you find them and they find you. Demarcus, do you, you even know what melting trade in their arms? And I'd be like, look at Jerry over there, looking like a little girl. Wow. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Um. Just want to melt in those strong arms. No. <laughs> First of all, that's not what trade is. Mm -hmm. um, but back to LeFou and Gaston. Define it for our listeners, Jared. So that you define it. You the one that so said that it. Our, so that our so that our young gays that listen to our podcast, the ones who are still developing in their time, can know what they're talking about and know what they're doing. No, you said it, Demarcus. You define it, Jared. I was gonna, I was gonna say something real rude, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna hold it in, put yeah. it back in my mouth. Go ahead and say mind. it. You told me, he said, I said, I'm like, Jared, you fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you you brought up the word, um, mm -hmm. you, you you know, because I like to gatekeep gay words and gay <laughs> sayings, so I'm not gonna say you it. The you the gatekeeper? Is that what this is? Oh, I definitely gatekeep. I, I gatekeep from you. <laughs> I have forever. Gordon is, may not. Gordon may tell you all about the Jackson and Grinders of the world. But I don't ever mention anything gay this to you. I why. never have. You do mention gay stuff to me. No, I this don't. is what. But this is why the Gordon, only gay stuff I mention to you is that 
um, you bring up too much gay stuff on this podcast, and when when you type in "black geek" in the the <laughs> the iTunes podcaster thing, it lists Black Geek Energy and every single Black gay <laughs> podcast on the internet. Those are the only gay things I've ever said to you. <laughs> so, no. I don't bring up gay stuff to you. That's, you that's, do. That's actually, y'all, if y'all look up Black Geek Energy on iTunes podcast, it do be it's in the gay section, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The not black geek, geek just, like just even, black geek. We are number one. We're number one even on that though, list. Even though only half of this podcast is gay. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Whew. Oh, man. Um, All right. Who's next? <laughs> who uh, else talk about? Who, who else do what you What about have? Captain Hook? Captain Hook. I think Captain Hook wanted to fuck Peter Pan so bad. Mm. Yeah, like, Captain Hook gave very. Um, he might have also been a pedophile. Yeah, yeah, pedophilic. Because he was in, he was always in Neverland, chasing after kids, trying to be young again, trying to be young forever. I mean, those which are very, you know, same things I've heard like in the gay community would be like, "Oh, I want to be young. I want to look like a little boy." That's but, things you know, that everybody says. Women, women and gay, women and gay men, women and gay. Wow. Men. Because I think most guys I know, most straight men I know, they be like, "Oh, I want, I can't wait to be older. I can't wait to start like getting a little bit of gray or whatever, mm. because that's when what men are quote unquote most attractive." No. Um, I have heard of that version. I've also heard a version of Cap- of how Captain Hook was the hero of the story Peter Pan, because mm. the Lost Boys were always doing stuff to him first. And Peter mm. Pan was always antagonizing him first. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a version of the story where he just wanted to be left alone. Like the crocodile was always after him. The 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 Lost Boys were always after him. Peter Pan was always after him. Like like mm-hmm. he never set out to go. So everybody get... just hating on him. Yeah, everybody just hating on him. Just I've like heard, how America heard... does gay people. I've heard Captain Hook was the hero too, but I heard it differently. I heard oh, it how'd you hear? like Peter Pan is kidnapping all these kids. Mm-hmm. Like he takes them from their homes and brings them to Neverland and they can't leave. And Captain Hook is trying to save them. Yeah. He's trying to return them to their families. Mm, I've heard that one. I heard that theory too. I've heard that theory too. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, it just mm-hmm. goes a story of like, you know, how. Uh, gay people are, are um, perceived in America and the world. On the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 could, I could agree with you, Jerry. Um, another one that crosses my mind is uh, Ka. Mm-hmm. If you're a Ka from the Jungle Book. Mm-hmm. 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 Very good. Now, very mm, yeah he gives if I was to see car in the streets I'm like that's a gay ass snake right there <laughs> <laughs> wow look at the way yeah. he's slithering <laughs> yeah yeah he is very gay um what's his song trust in me I love that song um yeah very very extremely gay um uh villain trust in me was actually the gayest song um that a mm-hmm. a villain had who was the villain in uh the princess and the frog oh uh dr cavassier um that's not his name uh that's not his <laughs> name <laughs> uh it's it's uh mr it's not really f uh, uh dr facilier yeah yeah, Dr. Dr. Facilier. Dr. Facilier. He, he was also gay, I think. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. Maybe I, I maybe I would give Dr. Facilier uh bye and not gay. Like mm. he like he down for whatever. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, if I were to mention trade on this podcast, which I don't, mm-hmm. the tradiest Disney villain would be 
um, you know that um, thing that happens at the end of Fantasia, the demon guy? Oh, oh, <laughs> the big demon coming. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Is that yeah. the end of Fantasia? Yeah, the end of Fantasia. Oh, his name is Chernobog. He's a yeah. demon. Yeah. Chernobog is like a, a a common demon name for like Satan or the devil. Yeah. Why well, why is he trade and Gaston is not? Oh, he would be trade because trade came from I'm not gonna tell you where the word came from. He would definitely be trade because you tell know it to the to the audience then. Shoot, like because people are hooked in. Yeah, I'm 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 gatekeeping. They can DM me and I will judge <laughs> by their DMs. <laughs> there it is always gatekeeping, y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna gatekeep. Um, but yeah, trade. Um, I would say he's trade because he doesn't really do anything. No, he doesn't really move from his little volcano, and mm -hmm. all the demons just flock to him. <laughs> all of the demons. Um, mm. They just flock to him and they love on him and they are massaging mm. his muscles and and he's loving it. He is loving. So because it. he's so because he's more of a receiver. He's not. He's not. He, he ain't. He ain't out and about like Gaston is like. Oh, I'm. I'm doing everything. Like, give me the gun. We going to go find Bell. He ain't. He ain't doing all that. So that's why he's trade. Okay. All right. No, I guess. I, I I believe that that the demon is a big hoe. Um, and he mm. has like, I mean, like in Atlanta, there's these tops that everybody has had. <laughs> so mm. yeah, that would be him. He would be that top that everybody has had a piece of. So yeah, most definitely. Wow, most definitely. I mean, but does that does that really uh does that really that does that stigma really affect tops though in that way? Where it's like, oh, everybody not had them, so. He ain't. He is less valuable. No, there's no less valuable in the in the gay um, mm. world. That's something that you straights mm. do. Okay. Oh, okay. Touche, my nigga. Touche. Yeah. Um, you know somebody who we skipped over, who we haven't mentioned, is Hades from Hercules. Mm. I mm -hmm. love Hades. Another mm -hmm. very Hades. God. Hades reminds me of like an older gay. Like he survived Stonewall, survives like the <laughs> the the AIDS genocide of the gays. Mm -hmm. And it's like <laughs> telling people about the good the 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 heyday of gay. <laughs> yeah. The golden age of Yeah. Um uh yeah, Hades is very queer coded as well. He gives me a lot of that um just like you said that um that gay person that relishes in those good old days of yore, mm -hmm. but somebody that is like, um, that, uh, politically correct. We have to dress in suits to be, um, seen as everybody as I mean to be seen as you know men, and we have to look a certain way. We can't be feminine. That would mm. be um, what's his name, Claude Frollo. Um, uh, the villain from Quasimodo. Mm -hmm. I think that's his name. Yeah, the priest dude. Yeah, the the priest dude. The priest mm. dude. That's I I that one's too on the nose, man. Because <laughs> he's a priest and he's gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was. You know, I'm not Catholic, but that one is real close to home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gives me very we, we we can't do that. We can't go to balls and we we have to fight mm -hmm. for our struggle by by fitting into the straight world. But he, you know he, yeah. What's what's his name? Claude Fro Frollo. 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 That's the part. That's the name I remember. Frollo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frollo reminded me of like he he was married first. <laughs> and he got a couple of kids, but mm -hmm. then he divorced his wife because he figured out he was gay, but he still ain't out the closet. He still ain't like, yeah. I'm gay. He just like, oh, me and my wife had like unre irreconcilable differences. Yeah. He knows who you know, he and I is, got but he hasn't uh, had sex with a man yet. Mm, and, I and think he's had sex with a man. You think so? 
I, I don't think I think so. he's I think he's had sex. I think he I think he has sex with men occasionally, but mm. he's guilty every time. Like uh, every time he maybe like once a month or once every other month or something like that, he has like a, a few little things that he hit up. You know what I'm saying? And every time he has sex with a man, he's like he's he has to go like uh confess. He gotta, you know, he gotta go through a whole bunch of rigmarole just to feel good about himself again. Yeah. I definitely knew somebody like that in the past. Um, mm. But yeah, I think that's all. Is Ooh, there? Who's you? Tell us more about this person. You don't have to tell us his name, but where did you? No, meet him? he's he's already out. So no. Oh no. Is there anybody else? Mm-hmm. Is he uh, Anton RDO? Is there anybody else that you think is he? Fam, you RDO? Um, is. Is Could he, be Alabama State. Are you? <laughs> is there anybody else that you think uh, should be listed on some of our gayest Disney villains list? Yeah, Clayton. Um, Clayton. Clayton from. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was trying to guess his name? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Clayton from uh, from Tarzan. Oh yeah, I've seen that mm-hmm. sex scene. Wait, you seen that sex scene? What? There's a very popular um in the gay world. There's mm-hmm. a very popular um uh guy who reanimates sex mm. scenes and he does it Disney style and he did uh, a Tarzan Clayton sex scene. It was very graphic and, you know. You I know. feel like that would've been real rough. Oh, it was. Yeah, I feel like Clayton is like Clayton, one of those angry gays, like he he knows he's gay, he accepts that he's gay, but he's not happy about it. I mean, he was the bottom. He was enjoying himself. Wow, I can you, see that. You too. think Clayton's a top? <sighs> oh my god! Had you asked me before, you said he was a bottom. I would have said, yeah, I would have thought Clayton was a top. I thought he was out here angry fucking everybody. No, Clayton is definitely not a top. Hmm. What 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 tips you off that he is not a top? What is what is like, mm, Clayton not not topping? Well, you know <laughs> that that video that I saw on Twitter, <laughs> but okay, also man, first of all, but you know that's fan man. Yeah, but also like Clayton is, does I mean there are, you can't look at somebody analyze somebody and say this person does this, this person does this, so this person is a top or a bottom gotta know somebody you have to like feel somebody you have to like 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 understand somebody to to kind of guess which side of the spectrum that they are on so in in my world uh play it swings more towards the bottom side i i can agree i can agree with that and i think sometimes some people just have an air about them and you just know Mm -hmm. because like like even me, like I meet women and I can immediately tell what she's like in the bedroom. You know what I'm saying? You know, some and then sometimes sometimes women surprise me. I get to know them and I'm like, oh, this is like completely different from who you are in the real world. But then other times it's like, mm, like you act like this, and I know that in the bedroom you're gonna be like this. Yeah. Some guys uh surprise me as well, you know, when I think one thing and then I Look at their pictures and I find out something else. Um, but yeah. That we didn't a... uh oh, I'll do one of the name two more. Pain and okay. panic. Hercules. Hercules. The little, the little demons. The little the demons. Little demon guys. He's like, I'm pain. I'm panic. Panic. reporting for duty. Pain I feel like I feel like I don't think so. I just think that they're funny. I think, I think, no, nah, I think they're gay. I think they discovered that they were gay when they were like real young and they just been together ever since. And they just so comfortable with each other. It's like, and I think they be doing nasty shit with each other. They just like, I think they got like a whole sex dungeon. They just be hurting each other. Well, pain and panic are brothers in Greek mythology. So <laughs> hopefully not. Fair enough. <laughs> Actually, it's Greek mythology. So, you know, anything could happen. <laughs> True, um, but yeah, we didn't name any uh lesbian. I know this is like the gay. Yes, we did. We said we um, didn't name. Any. You say Corella Deville. 
Cruella Deville. Okay, who did you say before that? I said Maleficent. Ursula. Maleficent. Yeah, I don't really agree with Maleficent, but definitely Cruella Deville. I said she was a drag queen, um, though. Mm-hmm. 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 Do we think there are any more like lesbians that they were missing? Um, maybe have, like, the right? the villain from Rapunzel. Like the witch? Yeah, the witch. You think she was keeping Rapunzel up in there and just like doing stuff to her? Like flicking her bean and whatnot? Yeah. That's yeah. a lot. That's I think she was taking her purity. That's, that's kidnapping and that's rape. I mean, because she rape. made Rapunzel call rape. her like mommy, right? She did. She did. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Or maybe she let's say she was grooming Rapunzel because she would kidnap Rapunzel when she was a little girl. Or like made some kind of deal with her parents and got her or whatever. Mm. I only saw that movie once um, years ago. Um, also, we could say the evil queen. You think so? From Snow White. Yeah. You think the evil queen? Take me there, Jared. Help me. Help me out. Uh, I just think that she may be gay. I think that she may hmm. be like a, one of the quiet, like, basketball type of days. Mm. I, I, okay. I just think that she goes in there, does her business and, you know, splits <laughs> some women open. I can see her liking women. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I can't I can't see her having sex with a mother. Mm. Like I don't so, know. I can't I can't wrap my head around that part of it. So you think she just be kissing women in the clubs? I think she'd be watching women have sex with each other or watching women have sex with men and like be look be staring in the woman's eyes. Wow. Okay. Um mm, we're not talking movies, definitely she go. Like I I can see she go like keeping her uh her two middle finger her two middle nails low. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Got long nails on every finger except for two. <laughs> I can That's see she gonna be in that kind of lesbian that show up with a backpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, anybody else? And if we want to throw more. one more in the bucket of like gay villains, uh, and if we include in the extended Marvel universe for all the shit they own, uh Loki from Avengers. Oh yeah, I mean that's canon. Mm, yeah, you're right. Touche, touche, touche. Yeah. But Loki's, you know, and he's a guy, he's a shapeshifter, so he's like everything. Yeah. Yeah. He, most definitely. He is everything and likes everything. Um, let me think. On that note, if we're strictly thinking about the MCU, um, do you think that they knows? I think Thanos is one of those who's like, like, like Namor, like Namor, like I'm a king. My tastes are eclectic, and I like what I like. I yeah. think Thanos is like that. He's like I'm. He's like I have sex with who I want to have sex with, and I also think that Thanos doesn't have sex often. Yeah, me neither. Canonically, he's in love with the with. He's in love with death, and mm -hmm. you know that's his main his main thing. But, but he I has think, had you know, he sex seen with people. Like, he got a child. Yeah, he does. He does. I think, I think like if he ain't seen Death in the Eon, he'd be like, "All right, I'm just gonna the next planet I take over. I'm just taking somebody from the planet." <laughs> yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Demarcus. Anything else? Ready for some questions? I'm ready for questions. So let's come back after this quick break on Black Geek Energy. Dude. What happens when a relentless robotic AI horde crash lands on a world full of fantastical creatures and magic wielding sorcerers? Find out in the few of Far Between Number One, now available for pre order on Kickstarter. Written by Mad Cave Studios talent search winner Damian Beckton and drawn by Rosario Mendez. Wait, Matt, what's happening? We haven't even started the episode yet and you're already doing dramatic synopsis reads? Yeah, brother. I just found out about this awesome Kickstarter for the few far between. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. Tell me more. 
in this thrilling fantasy sci-fi comic, a black magic wielding sorceress who reluctantly allies with a friendly, inferior version of the robots leading a chosen few to prevent a complete takeover. When these characters learn of a plot to sabotage the queendom that keeps them safe, fates get crossed, friendships are built, trust gets tested, and, of course, lots of thrilling fantasy sci-fi action. Oh, Billy, that sounds fun. How can people support this comic? Go to farbetweencomic.com to go directly to the Kickstarter campaign and sign up for pre-launch or pre-order digital or physical copies of The Few of Far Between Number 1 today. That's www.farbetweencomic.com. Campaign ends September 5th. Okay, guys, we are back. We are back. We are back. Um, I'm going to mention all of the ways you can contact us after the questions. But, DeMarcus, I do have a question for you. As you usually do. And it's... And I, I guarantee it's disrespectful. No, no. I mean, not. I, mean, I have two questions, unless you have a question. I don't. I, I okay. didn't have a fair question. Um, I have two questions for us. And um, my first question is, who is more oppressed? The mutants or mm. the Eldians? Uh, remind me who the Eldians are. Attack on Titan. Oh, mmm, mmm. I would say the mutants. The mutants are more oppressed because the Eldians have their own nation and have been able to like uh, govern themselves for a long time. While there are still some Eldians that are like living in other nations that like have to do the whole like encampment thing and wear like the little symbol, like. They, the ones that do have their own nation, have pretty much been left to their own devices aside from them like dropping off titans every now and again. The mutants, every time they get their own nation or try to like do something for themselves, somebody come fuck it up. And it's humans. never like humans, humans specifically. And it's never like, oh, like, you know, they built their own thing, let's leave them alone until something happened. It's like, nah, like they got their own nation, like we can't let them have that because they're gonna come after us. And I think it's a very, mm, a very, a very, a very, uh, a very white human thing. It's like, oh, like we did them wrong, so they're absolutely gonna do us wrong, uh, once they have like the, any modicum of power. Right, I definitely um agree with you. And I got this question from, um somewhere on Instagram and they had who is there to have four options. They had um who's more oppressed. They said the um mutants, the Eldians, mm -hmm. and then they said something like the um the Saiyans and the who was the last person? Hold on, let me see. Yeah, who's more oppressed? The Saiyans or the um what was Sasuke? Oh, the, the Uchiha's. The Uchiha. Yeah. Mm. Well, the Saiyans were like a warrior race. So I don't really see them as being oppressed so much as they were defeated. They um, said the Saiyans were number one. The number one oppressed? Why? They said, okay, on this thing, they said Saiyans were one. Um the Uchiha were two, the Eldians were three, mm. the mutants were four. Mm. What, was, what was the reasoning? Like, I, I want to hear some of the explanations at this point. They didn't give a reason for one and two. They said that mm. uh, three and four, that, and I quote, <laughs> the mutants go through racism or whatever, but the Eldians... They had this whole thing with the dog and the little girl. So I got to give it to them. Dog and a little girl? Yeah. What dog remember? and little girl? Oh. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that is horrible. Um, and 
I, whoever made this list, I don't feel like they've read the comics because the mutants have had the equivalent of the dog and the little girl time and time again for for like fifty years. For, I don't for, think they read the comics. It was um a a little podcast, and this little white girl and this little black boy were answering. So no, mm. I don't. Mm. Where where was the little black boy from? I don't know. Look like California? Minnesota. Mm, yeah, I, makes sense. I can um, um send it to you if you want to see it, but sure, I do want to see it. But like the Saiyans, the Saiyans are a warrior race. So for me, for me, it's like for me and like thinking about them, it's like y'all not even oppressed. Like y'all oppress other people. Actually, mm -hmm. like their whole thing was like going to other planets and taking taking over. Um, and it just so happened they ran into somebody that was stronger and they beat them up. And I don't even think the Saiyans feel bad about that. Like, not they're not like, oh, like Freeze is unfair. Like he beat a, you know, he beat us. They're just like, fuck, we lost. Um, who was the other one? The Uchiha. The Uchiha. The Uchiha. Now, the Uchiha is tough for me because really it was only one person that didn't fuck with them, and because beyond that, before that one person was in charge. Like they was like the police force of the village. They was like they held like high positions of the village. They were like senators and shit. They were like missionaries for the village and everything. Like they were, they were up there. So they weren't oppressed so much as they were like betrayed. Exactly. And like one person just kind of like exterminated them. Yeah. That was that was specific and that was personal. That wasn't oppression. But like with the mutants, that shit is systematic. Like yeah. as soon as folks find out you're a mutant, they're like, oh nope. We don't fuck with you, and it's and it's so it's so prevalent for the mutants that it's like in society. So like people who don't even ha have power over you still, you know, still are prejudiced against you because just because you're a mutant. Like I run a laundromat, and I don't allow mutants to wash their clothes here. You know, yeah. like that that is like true oppression through and through. I'm mm -hmm. sure they can't get loans, they can't get housing. You know what I'm saying? Like every time they, they start to like found like a little city or look any any piece of like organization or any piece of like any 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 modicum of peace the mutants start to carve out for themselves, humans come and fuck it up. They come right. and bomb it. Then like and they don't like just come and like destabilize and try to buy the land. No, they bomb the mutants, they send out robots to kill them. Like, no, the mutants are hated and oppressed. Yeah. From the government down. And from the it's government worldwide. down. Except for mm -hmm. uh Latveria. <laughs> and that's only because Doom is in charge. And Doom is like, yo, we fuck with powerful people regardless of where they come from. <laughs> right. All right. Um, and then the Eldians, the Eldians are close. The Eldians are the closest one on that list, but the Eldians have their own country. Yeah. Uh, and you know, if their king wasn't such a, you know, if their king had like erased all their minds, like they could go and free their people. Yeah. And they destroyed the world, which is something that the mutants would never do. Yeah, they, I mean, couldn't do. <laughs> the mutants could do it easily. I think I think if the mutants ever tried to destroy the world, the humans would destroy the world first, trying to stop the mutants. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I have nothing more to add. Uh, I feel the same way. Okay, mm -hmm. this next... Question is from our friends at Six Brown Chicks on Twitter. I'm going to read you the first few words from um, this this uh, question. And mm -hmm. Marcus, you tell me which one you want. Mm -hmm. My fiance's mama caught me on a Tinder date and she punched me in the face. Mm. Okay. okay. I, Interesting. I feel like we might have heard that one before, but okay. Oh, so let me... No, 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 no. no. Keep going. There's two more. Well, I just unbooked my dick. <laughs> okay, so I was downsized four years ago. I may get called back to work any day now. Mm -hmm. I had my kids for the weekend. I asked my girlfriend to babysit. Mm -hmm. Hey, so I have two favorite strippers, Suki and Claudia. They're not too good at dancing and they're misshaped. <laughs> I want to read, I want the strippers one. I want that one. 
All right, here we go. Oh God, this is long. It's your boy, you know what I'm saying? I can sit, I am a self-proclaimed strip club sommelier. <laughs> Do you go to strip clubs in California? I haven't been to one in California yet. I need to go. There's one like in downtown San Jose I want to hit up before I like move. Well, I probably want to hit it before I move away, but I want to go to it. I want to check it out. Yeah, Actually, yeah. I have been to strip clubs out here. I've been to one strip club out here twice. And, and do and do they get all the way nude? They get naked on stage, but it, it ain't no lap dances. But they private rooms are a lot cheaper than it is in uh, Atlanta. So, you know, give and take. Did I tell you what I did in the private room at a strip club before? Mm -mm. I would mm. love to hear it. I love to hear the story. Hey, so I have two favorite strippers, Suki Jared. and Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> they're not too good at dancing. Don't tease us, Jared. And they're misshaped. But I like them. They work at two different clubs. I'm running the long con. I'm giving them the let me get you out of here so we can get some real money scam. I flash, in quotation, borrow cash, and I spend the bare minimum on both of them. My goal was to have them both working for me. Somehow they found out about each other. I told Claudia I was leaving Suki so there was no need to call her anymore, etc. Meanwhile, I took Claudia to a car dealership to see what she likes. I go home and I find Suki and Claudia sitting in my in the front room with my wife. My wife says, so you've been busy, huh, mother effer? My wife blocks the door and tells me to sit down. Two side chicks and my wife want to talk. I sprint upstairs and jump out of the window. I got two broken ankles ah! from this. <laughs> I can't. <Daddy>! What, <laughs> what, what floor did he jump from? Uh, and how old is he? Like a second story jump? You got to be better, bro. You better yeah, tuck and you, roll. Yeah, you got to tuck and roll. All right. Two side chicks. Wait, okay. So I got two broken ankles. I called police and I slid away from the house. I called the ambulance and I slid around outside. I told cops to arrest those fat bees because I felt threatening. Police didn't arrest them because I jumped. They didn't push me, but I need some get back for these cracked ankles. I need some high quality revenge, especially for my wife, where it can't be traced back to me. Advice. All right, let's run back through this. Um, <laughs> this man is married, first and foremost. But yeah. he out in these strip clubs promising these joints the world. So yeah. I'm going to get you up out of here. We're going to make some real money. It's going to be me and you. Whoop -de -whoop. Mm hmm um, when the jig is up, when he get caught, when he get start getting caught up, he starts telling mo lies. Eventually, it comes to a head. All three of these women, his wife and the two strippers he's been talking to, are in his living room, and he decides to go to the go to the second floor. We're gonna assume it's on the two floors and jump out the window. And now he wants to get back, gets to get them back. My personal philosophy is that the best revenge is the absence of your presence <laughs> but it doesn't sound like they will be losing much if you left their lives here um but that's what i that is that's my first piece of advice the best revenge is the absence of your presence because whatever bullshit that they was putting you through whatever they were benefiting from from while you were there they no longer have that and they gotta go find some other sucker um, um there is no revenge to be had. I, I think logically, I think my second piece of advice is there's no revenge to be had. Like you, you have your just desserts by getting two broken ankles and where you should be right now is hoping that that is enough for your wife to forgive you. That is enough. Um, That is enough pain and suffering for you to go through for your wife to be like, all right, cool. I'll just, I can get over it now because you broke both of your ankles. Um, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. I'm surprised, disappointed, and really disgusted by these strippers who done done all this bullshit. It's like, baby, you know, the game you in men come into a club prom all the time, promises you promising you this, that, and the other, you know what I'm saying? And he ain't spending it. So what you, you know what I'm saying? 
like he flashing you big money but only like tipping you a little bit like spending the bare minimum like what are you what are you doing why even go through this whole rigmarole of finding the other woman finding his wife and stuff like that just get him to spend more money on you in the club like agree with his bullshit long far enough for him to spend more money on you i don't like they like these strippers had like had a leg up they had they had the 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 pristine the optimal opportunity to to make a come about this dude and they said no i'd rather just blow his life up because one of them could have got a car and i guarantee you he would have bought the other one a car too matter of fact if they were gonna team up they could have been like bet we gonna you know you know we find out about each other but we cool if you fucking with, with, with you fucking with both of us but you gotta treat us the same so if she get a car i get a car if she get jewelry, I get jewelry. If I get, you know, if I get dinner, she get dinner. Whatever it is. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and rest up your ankles, bro. And hope you're still married at the end of the day. Are you done? Mm-hmm. I'm done. Okay. First of all, I will also like to say that we do not know both sides of the story. We do not know what the we know the left hand is doing but we don't know what the right hand is doing demarcus you are of course all for the antagonist of the story the one who went in there and blew up the people's lives you aren't aren't even considering the people's whose lives have blew up you don't know what he was telling um, these two strippers, I think they were Claudia and Suki. You don't know what he was telling these strippers for them to think that he would um, do things for them outside the club. Like he was taking one of them to the car dealership. And then, um, and then this guy was so inconsiderate that he got caught with strippers in two different clubs. Like, is there a network of strippers? Do they have a group chat where they talk about, you know, the people? Strippers do be knowing each other because usually they strip at more than one club and so they bounce in between. And they know, you know, even if they don't know the stripper directly, it's like, oh, I know of somebody who told me about this girl before. Yeah, but um, but are they talking about all their little Johns, all their little people so, in this group so short chat answer is yes. I mean, you know what? I guarantee, like... The strippers started believing it. Like at some point, they was like, "All right, I got this one dude who come into my club all the time, and he always saying this, that, and the other." And they started being like, "You know what? I believe it." And they started bragging on it. And another girl was like, "You know what? That sounds like the same guy to be coming into my club." He took Claudia to an actual car dealership. So why wouldn't you believe him? So and and then what else is he doing so that? He would even make it to, I'm going to take you out of this club and go into this car dealership. So, yes, he got his just desserts. Yes, Ooh. he deserves more. He deserves more. I think that his lovely wife needs to pack up and leave him. I don't know if they have any kids. He did not say that, I don't think. But, um, but yeah. Yeah. He does not want or need or respect a monogamous relationship um so he needs to go out and he needs to do whatever he wants to do out in the real world i don't That's disagree I with anything i don't disagree with anything you said um i just think that the strippers had this, this prime opportunity to come up with this man and they chose not to and they chose to like blow up his instead because they if they were if they were in contact like that and Claudia was like oh he took me to the car dealership girl he about to get me a car uh Suki could have been like oh bet I'm getting a car too <clears throat> well he already said that he was going to leave one of them Suki or Claudia or one of them I mean that, that was obviously a lie he he started this thing off telling him he running a con mm. anyways y'all you can tell us how you feel on our Instagram, Black Geek Energy, on our TikTok, Black Geek Energy, on our Twitter, BGE underscore pod. You can leave a comment um, on um, our YouTube 
Black Geek Energy. And you can also comment on iTunes, Spotify, and anywhere else you can rate us five stars. Also, just now, as of today, we're live streaming this on Twitch. So go ahead and follow us on Twitch. Guess what the username is? You guessed right. Black Geek Energy. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. DeMarcus, you need to go ahead and set up your um accounts because mm -hmm. we are on Twitch and as of now, I'm the only follower. Mm. And Demarcus, I think I did something wrong because I can't chat. I like when I chat. I don't know. I I gotta figure it out. So I gotta figure it out. This is to the test run to okay. let y'all know that we are doing this. But uh, yeah, follow mm. us on Twitch, and yeah, just let us know. Demarcus, any final words? Not for real, man. Um, yeah, we learned today that the trade is the one that stand in the background and don't really say nothing, and all the games come to him. That is not the trade. Uh -oh. That is not. The trade. <laughs> That's what he said. Re That's not. Y'all get in the comments and let me know if Jared was right because That's, that's not what, what I heard said. and said. That's not what said. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> BGE out. Wow. <laughs>